Hello everyone, I'm T Junkie. Welcome back to part 8 on how to do a main menu. Because I'm going to turn this into a whole game, it's, uh, it's good to get a style going. So in this tutorial, what I'm going to do, I'm going to talk you through how. Let's just see if this changes. Yeah, the game volume's off. That's good. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to change the font and how the buttons look and I might even change the boxes here as well actually I will show you and to begin starting what we do is we need to import a few things so in GUI skin I'm just going to create a couple more folders inside that folder I'm going to call one font fonts and then right click GUI skins again and create another one textures textures I have I have a font and some textures. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get those. And the textures I'm gonna drag into the textures folder. And my font I'm gonna drag into the font folder. Right, the font is a TTF format, true type font if I believe if I'm correct or not. As soon as you import it, I already create a material and a texture for it. And that's just fine, we can leave the font how it is. However, you'll notice I've got a box background here. I've also got three versions of a button. The hover, the normal, the pressed. you need all of those. Because if we look inside the main menu, that's the normal, how the button looks normally. That's what it looks like when you hover over it, and when you press it, you see it gets dark in the centre. So that's three states. Now to do that, all we really have to do for now is click our game, our GUI skin, mine's called game skin, and create another style. I'm gonna need, yeah, create another style. So it's gonna be three now. Rename this to button uh, style. It'll probably be the best. Now, if you press the little arrow next to normal, hover and active you'll see you've got like a background textures in there. This is where our fonts, our images come in handy. But before we do that, what we're going to do is select all of them. And then when you select all of them, in the inspector, you will have it as texture type. When we have texture, we want to change that to GUI, GUI. And filter mode, we want point. Compressed, we want true color. You can leave the max size, you can edit if you want. It really doesn't matter. Let me just click apply. Now all of these are in true colours. That's when they're shown, they'll all be in true colour. Now it's good to note that if you as soon as you change it from GU you know, from texture to GUI, all transparency carries carries over as well. Now what I do, now I've got that, go back into our uh, GUI skin, and under normal, just drag your button normal in there, and for hover, you drag your button hover in there, and button press, I'm going to drag my button pressed in there. Now, these text colours underneath, I'm just going to leave them all white. Use this little dropper that I've got at the moment, or you can manually just click it here and then change it up here it's always the same now with that done our buttons will show up our buttons won't show up sorry not yet at least and now actually before I do any of this I think we should actually get them going so in order to put a font in you notice up here, you see font is Arial at the moment. Well, just get your font and drag and drop it on. And that's easy. Now, if we click play, you notice how my font is completely changed. All across the board, no matter what I go into, it's changed. But you notice the buttons haven't changed either. Well, to do that, we're going to go back into our main menu script. And now find any button. Uh, I know the back button's a button, so we go to back. 
and a comma, another speech mark. So I'm going to call it button style. And now what we can do is just copy that from the comma onwards. We find every button we've got, just put it in there. That's the options in the quick game. Create character, the generating character, and load character and delete character and there's a button. Level one, two, three, and four. Let's see their buttons as well. So put it all in the, actually one of them is images. Yeah, that's good like that. For now at least. And audio options, I know is a button. And graphics options is a button. Apply is a button. Graphics qualities, so you go back down to graphics quality. And now here we've got the for loop to bring up the names. Right after graphics quality dot names, I after square bracket, paste in the button style again. And now underneath apply as well. Now I think we've got every button, so we save that off. And we go into Unity and click play. You notice how this all looks rather terrible. Well, a couple of things. One, I know for a fact we've not changed the font size in the button style. So what I want to do is just click, just delete that, just put zero in there. That's that just sets it to default, which I think is a 18, 11. You notice how we've got them all the same now. No, they're all decent size. And when we hover over our buttons and you can click them. They're all there. Now what is wrong with this is if you go into our custom styles again, the button style, the alignment, we want middle center. Here we click play again. And we've got them all in. If you look around the edges of the button, they're not they're not as they would uh, well, I know, but they're not as they're meant to look. So the so one way to do this is in border. In that's in border, you've got left, right, top, and bottom values. Right. Because you said it's a GUI, Unity automatically divides a GUI image into nine. So it will be the corners will be, will, it will be four. And you've got the top, bottom, left and right, which is number four, and then you've got the centre, which is the ninth. Now, editing these values here is to designate a border. It's basically, it's basically to designate how wide the edges of the image are, and it will fix the same images. It will not scale anything within the border. And to do this, I'm just going to say four, because I know my image is about, let's say, four pixels. Four, 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 four. It's pretty standard around the board. Now, if I click play again, as you can tell, you can now see a little white glow above the button. I'll hover over them and click options. I've got my options here. I've got the apply button here. If we go level select. I've got my different levels. You notice how this button's even is really big, but if you look at the back button, they look almost identical. But the center image, but everything in the center, and the whole button itself looks scaled perfectly. I click level A, and everything works how it's meant to. And you also notice, even though you've added a custom font, and go in options, even even the uh, even though you've added a custom font, all the other things like subheadings and the the game titles and everything, no matter what edits you did to those, like the the, the text size, the color, they all stay. Now, I've got a box background here. Now, in my options, let's say I click audio options, I've got a box. You can see it here. And it's quite a similar process, actually. But now we've, th this is the reason why I didn't create two in one go. But now we've done the button style, 
we can use all the parameters we've already set, say the font, text, the, the size of the font we can use, the border we can use. So we, we don't have to really edit much of this at all. And what we can do is we create another one, so add another one, so it'll be four now I've got. You know, so it co copies the header row. I'm just going to call this box style. However, in your normal hover and active, what we want to do is we want to delete all of them out. And instead, drag the box background onto normal. I drag it onto both, or oh, three, sorry. But you don't actually have to, you just have to drag it onto normal, I think. And that's the box style done. Now I'm going to do alignment for this is upper center. The main reason for this is in our load game, if we go into our load game, Oh, that's our game. We have some text here saying choose save game. If you notice, this text here, the player name, the gender, and these buttons here aren't actually a part of the box. But this text here that says choose save game is. So alignment of an upper center is the best, actually, we could do. Now with that done, all we have to do is go into our find our box so that's a label low game here's a here's a box and we just literally put in box style same as you did the button copy this and I know in the options we do have this sort of stuff as well it's here, there we go now we've saved this off I believe that's all we've got is a box at the moment we'll go back into here and see how it looks we'll go options and click audio we've got our box in as you can tell the edges aren't blurred at all and to demonstrate probably the best way I can of stretching, what I'm going to do is in my box style, I'm going to delete the border and just set it all to zero. And click play, and then I'm going to click options and then all your options. As you can tell, it's dramatically different. I know that the black is actually one, meant to be one pixel and the blue is meant to be another pixel, and the grey is just a filler in the middle. Because I don't have a border stating that, say, four pixels in from the left, top, right, and bottom are a border, it stretches the whole lot to fill the whole gap, whereas only stretching the center. So if I go back here and put four in, four, four, four. And I click options and all the options again, it looks fine. Now, if I click gra graphics options, it still looks the same. Now, as you recall, our load game is a box as well. As you can also tell in this one, the border is perfect. Even though it doesn't take up half the screen width, and it takes up a small section, it still looks the way it's meant to. So it's always common practice to make sure how big your border is on your image, and then change the border in your custom style to be the same or if not more than that so the edges of your screen do not blur it's great if you have like an expanding ex expansive window and you stretch the window wide then you shrink it again while in game time it won't stretch the border along with it just the ev just the image in the center which will be semi transparent usually solid color but the buttons, as you notice, down here, have a little line. Now, we're on two different colours. But yet when we, say, go to level select, it looks normal. So, even though we've got a lot going on, it still works. And I use true colour, because if you don't use true colour and you use, say, 16 bits or compressed, 
the image quality on the Im on what the GUIs you've put in won't be to the full potential. So, and the GUI basically enables transparency in a lot of other gizmos. But I've been TJK, this has been part 8. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.